And welcome to this edition of virtual Trail Talk TV. We can't do the office uh, today or for the next six months because of bloody COVID, but we're doing it virtual. Uh, I'm here in Tenerife in my COVID bunker. And today I've got Martin and Pear from Denmark, from Nexta. Gentlemen, welcome to Trail Talk TV. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Oh, it's, it's an honor. Um, and today we're talking about Nexta, who I, I think is a, a, well, atypical European ad tech company who build brilliant technology to fit specific problems. Uh, and the guys are going to run us through how the platform works there. But before we do that, I'm going to let the two gentlemen introduce themselves briefly. And we're going to talk about Next in general, um, the problems they solve, and how the technology works, because that's the most interesting part here. So, gentlemen, just give yourselves a brief, uh, could you do a brief introduction uh, of what you do at Next? Sure. Yeah, I can start. Uh, my name is Pierre. Uh, I have a background in physics, theoretical physics, um, did a PhD, spent a bit of time in academia, then I decided to get out into the real world. Um, I joined a startup, Danish startup uh, called Blackwood 7, where I headed their AI efforts for, for around five years, and now I'm here at Nexta. Yep, good, brief intro. Yeah, yeah. So my name is Martin. Uh, founded the company uh, three years ago. Uh, have a, a background in another ad tech company called Platform, based in Denmark. And previous to that, before that, I worked on on a lot of our publisher sites uh, in terms of ad tech technology. Yeah, so that's me. So ad form is spinning off some great new companies. Uh, it's a it's a good trend to see. So uh, let's talk about the, the company, uh, Martin. Uh, you first. Um, what exactly is next? Because it'd be interesting to get just get a sort of brief overview of what you do, just the kind of problem you're really solving. Because the one thing that kind of interests me in your company, you're attacking a specific area that a lot of ad tech just kind of ignores, which is basically the SMB market and helping publishers and platforms attack that. So let's talk about what the business and how just an overview of the business for people who who, who are not aware of Next Step. Yeah, so let's go a bit back to, you know, founded the company three years ago. And I think why uh, we saw a, a great opportunity in the market to address uh, small, medium-sized advertisers today who are essentially only been serving by, by the big ones, which is, is Google and Facebook, on the behalf of, of publishers and classifieds. So we saw an opportunity to build an uh, ad tech uh, platform towards small, medium-sized enterprise companies who essentially want to do advertising across channel. On the other hand, how we are serving those guys is, is through our clients and partners, which is essentially publishers and, and classifieds, because as you all are aware, uh, most of all publishers, houses globally and classifieds, have a tremendous relation towards SMEs today. However, their product offering haven't been involved in, in, in such a creation that they actually giving a product offering to the SMEs as they are needed today. So fundamentally, we are a, a platform serving SMEs to do advertising across, and we are addressing that through publishers and classifiers. And like you, 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 you have quite a lot of uh, big relationships with uh, with platforms and classified sites in in Europe, and that's quite interesting because you, you've done, you're a big you, cyber uh, uh, Shipstead is one of your big uh, one one of your big clients. I'm just wondering how that you work with those guys uh, in terms of facilitating, you know, manage managing buys on behalf of SMEs because the. The classic situation, well, well, it's not a classic situation, but the situation is that Facebook and Google have kind of wrapped up quite a lot of small small advertiser spend. Uh, I always tell the story about my sister who doesn't advertise. She's got her own little hardware store in my hometown, doesn't advertise on the local newspaper, just does it all through Instagram, and it works pretty well. But you guys are kind of taking and say, well, you said Mr. Publisher, Mr. Platform, Mr. Classified site, you can actually help your your advertisers to buy across these different platforms like Facebook, like Google, like Amazon via some sort of dashboard. I'm just wondering, wondering how you work. Just give us a use case of how you work with a specific publisher. And I'll, I'll ask that question first and then we'll jump into the tech itself because I'm wondering yeah. really interested in how it works. Yeah, so I think getting back to uh, the case with your sister, I think it's, it's typically how we, we see 
uh, when we are talking about uh, at least local publishers, these guys are actually out, you know, still doing, you know, print advertising, helping SMEs to do print advertising. But in the operation, these guys would like to become what we call the local agency. So salespeople from publishers are actually facing all SMEs in the local area and actually helping them through our platform to be present in your local area on Facebook, on Google AdWords, Instagram, and also on their own server inventory because we have integration to third-party systems. So essentially, salespeople in local areas actually helping small SMEs to do advertising locally across channels as Facebook, Google, Display, and their own inventory. Yeah. And the more channels, the more channels, uh, Martin, the better for you because you're able to kind of make that complexity easier to manage, I guess. And the publishers then benefit because they have the relationship with the with the advertiser because it is difficult to advertise if you don't have the expertise to advertise across all those different channels. Yeah, we also see uh, more and more local agency popping up, helping SMEs. So it's not only about Google and Facebook, they, but they tend to be expert in Google and Facebook advertising and actually forget about that. It's actually a local presence within the digital newspaper locally. So we are seeing a lot of local agency popping up and actually taking away the, the advertising spent from the local newspaper. So we are essentially helping uh, the local newspaper to bring that revenue that they are essentially, not only the revenue losing to Facebook and Google, but also losing the relation in the long term. So we frankly believe that these guys should own the relation to the end client based on technology. Yeah. So let's jump. There's obviously a lot going on in this platform. So let's just sort of jump into it now, Perry. You're going to give us sort of a run through on sort of the, the technology behind it because obviously with all these integrations and all this data processing, there are there obviously is a lot of uh, technology behind this. So let's bring up the presentation uh, first here, Perry, and we can run through some, some of the slides on how this technology works. Sure. So I think before right. jumping into that, just a bit of um, on our value proposition to publishers and classified, we know uh, as a fact, if we need to create value, so we need to create value to the end advertiser, meaning that we need to ensure whenever advertisers are buying through our platform that they actually do a return of investment. Yeah. Otherwise, these guys would go directly to Facebook or Google. But what Pierre is going to show now is what we've been working on for the last two years in terms of our optimization bit. What will happen when you do advertising through our platform? Because essentially, we need the SMEs to buy advertising again because we are bringing them clients. So that's actually our investment going forward is to do optimization on behalf of the publisher's own inventory and the first party data and then bring the value to the end client, which is the SMEs. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, thanks, to that, Martin. Pierre, well, let's let's run through sort of some of the sort of back end and how it works. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> sure. So uh, I would like to show a small video first that we sure. and are quite proud of. So I'll just uh, roll it now. Let us introduce you to Neo. Neo is the Nexus Digital Omnichannel Optimization Engine powered by artificial intelligence. It helps advertisers utilize the full potential of online marketing solutions in an easy, automated, and optimized manner. Our AI-driven solution distributes your budget across channels to unlock the full potential of your campaign. Reach out to your local media partner and get access today. Now available for Nexta.io partners. Where's the Danish accent? I, I was expecting some Danish uh, woman. I like, well, he's always American. Anyway, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. It's actually a good point. So she's actually a colleague, a colleague of us who uh, recently joined and came back from, from Google for a year. So she, and she is Danish. She speaks like an American, right? It's, right, it's right. Fair enough. We can go into that in another edition of Trader Talk, how the Danish accent has become Americanized. But let's, uh, <laughs> let's jump into this. Fair yeah. So, uh, as the video showed, um, this is about the uh, next Omnichannel Optimization Engine, or NEO for short. So, this is our uh, AI-powered engine for uh, optimizing uh, performance and delivery KPIs. So, the performance KPIs would be something like uh, lowest cost per click, lead or conversion, while still spending uh, the whole budget. Or maybe you want to deliver a certain amount of clicks across a bunch of systems uh, while uh, doing that at, for the lowest possible budget. Those are, are our typical use cases. 
uh, and new utilizes all the systems that we have integrated with so different so uh, different display channels, social and search. And um, so Neo runs on top of the of the uh, Nexta platform. So these two things together, they basically generate a lot of values for uh, for partners and and uh, and their advertisers. Um, and we do this by reducing the cost of sales and operations for our partners, uh, because you can book basically these campaigns through a, a simple flow, either in our UI, uh, which can be customized, or our API, um, if you prefer that. Um, and what you can basically do. So you can book the campaigns to these various platforms via your UI, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. We have a, a single a unified booking flow where it's easy to book campaigns across several dis different systems. And, and one of the reasons why this is important is because this is about scalability. So we are not addressing uh, big advertisers. So in, in general, I think we are around 20,000 campaigns live in our system now. So we are addressing SME markets with uh, average order size between 200 euros to 300 euros. So if you're looking into to scale towards SMEs, you need automation on top. Otherwise, this would be uh, caught out by, you know, inefficiency workload. So if you don't, you want to do a Google advertising, you don't, you want to do Facebook advertising, you want to do display advertising, and you want to change the creative, you need to log into three various platforms and multiply that with 20,000 campaigns. It's not a scalable business. Yeah. So what we are achieving with the, the, the one UI is actually you can manage campaigns across with one UI and actually serve that on third party system. So that's a totally game changer in terms of work uh, efficiency uh, towards our partners. Okay, brilliant. And also consolidate reporting. So it's easy to, to capture the values. Yeah. So for the end client, you also get the uh, optimum performance and delivery. So this helps with, uh, with retention, resale, and upsale to your existing uh, clients. And, and also uh, this new product, it is, um, it is, it's highly customizable. So it can be tailored to a specific business need and vertical. Uh, so it's basically modular and we can easily extend it, um, add a new feature if, if we need to. And, and, because we can do this, we can basically cover any kind of business trade-offs you might have uh, uh, um, managing short-term and long-term goals, for example. Okay. And another very important feature is that we can incorporate your unique first-party data. Uh, so, for example, if um, this could be like maybe you have a lot of metadata on the kind of products that your that your clients sell, so this would be a typical for uh, for classifieds, or maybe if you're a publisher, you have a very good classification of the kind of clients uh, that you have in your portfolio, uh, and and taking advantage of this kind of structured first party data is not really possible with the, with like the vanilla big tech solutions. They simply don't allow for this, but this okay. can bring a huge value and is bringing okay. a huge value. So 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 the value for partners and advertisers is there. Um, um, it, that's obvious in terms of what they're, they're doing. Can you bring me to the slide now where you talk, to, talk about this, the, this uh, the data exchange, because it's quite interesting, um, and walk us through that, um, if you could. Uh, because I, I think like, I think people need to realize that this sort of, the, the sort of back end, how this works, because I really like the fact that you're kind of going after this SME market, because one, it's interesting from a, small publisher or platform bases that are competing with the big guys, but also agencies who've got lots of SME uh, um, clients, which is really interesting because, you know, you are empowering them to kind of build across various platforms. But I want to know, um, and I think a lot of people would be interesting in this, this data, this data exchange piece. So could you walk us through that, uh, Pera, because it's quite interesting. Sure, sure. So this basically just explains the loop of how data is generated in, in this uh, in this flow. So um, so a user starts by entering a website. Um, this website could be a normal uh, website. It could be a social media platform or a search website. Then some kind of ad is shown. Um, that impression is being recorded uh, down into the, the systems that we're running on. So this would be Adform, uh, Google, Facebook, and so on. Um, then if, uh, if a user clicks on the banner, that is also being recorded. Um, and then you end up at the client's website. And then you can also track what's going on there by passing on the various kinds of UTM tags 
and maybe you're running some uh, some analytics software on that server, which basically links what happens in on the outside of your website what happens inside of your website. And we can then consolidate all of those data points and basically uh, build our AI and our models around uh, that consolidated data set. Uh, and this all happens automatically. We have integrations to all of these systems. Uh, so there's no work for the for the clients of any kind. This all uh, runs on our backend. Yeah, and you, you have a, a, a fairly sort of robust uh, machine learning uh, infrastructure that helps a lot of this stuff. So could you just give us a wee little talk with that? Because this, it, this is sort of like, you're all kind of uh, you know helping automate a lot of this process. Like it would it would need like I, I know that you're I, I take it you're integrated with the Google uh, and Facebook and the programmatic display ecosystem, and I'm, I'm sure you you you, you uh, geniuses in Denmark have other platforms lined up soon soon this up. But you're make it easier then to kind of log in and do. All. I'm kind of interested from. Uh, a conversion perspective because that's where the rubber hits the road here right your ability to show or why as you said martin because it's kind of like small advertisers dtcs etc are interested in performance like how many people uh how many sales is it driving how many people is it driving to my store if i run a campaign am i going to have a flurry of people uh buying obviously at the minute we can't do that because of covid but um i'm just curious how that AI infrastructure is sort of feeding into your conversion metric. And there's a good, interesting sort of uh, um, slide around uh, the uh, conversion funnel model. And I'd love to talk through that because that's quite interesting from that perspective. Yeah, so I think that's the, the spot on to, to watch when we are addressing SMEs. We are, you know, not talking about brand awareness, you know, viewability. These guys, they want conversion, they want sales, they want in-store traffic, they want, you know, having, you know, whenever putting $1 into advertising, they want return of investment. So in terms of us to scale towards these type of clients, we are uh, putting much more effort into performance marketing. And that's also a new discussion to have with publishers and classifieds who are primarily uh looking at least on the publisher side looking for for awareness but if we are and want to succeed on on the on the on the sme market we, we need to serve this as a performance marketing tool where Absolutely. where peer have some you know um cases on how we are tracking towards conversion and sales can you can you show us that pair there the slides on um, conversion funnel model. Conversion funnel matching. I'm just curious from that. Just, just I know this is sort of the meat and the sausage type thing, but this is kind of like, this is interesting from what you guys do because I, I think the frame this, you're taking the one thing that was killing the SME or the, the, the independent ad tech and independent uh, agencies, independent publisher, independent sort of uh, uh, platform layer is this, these big behemoths of Facebook, Google, and, and uh, Amazon, all the rest of it. But you, you, you're you actually working against that and actually saying, we can work together. Like you, you're not seeing this as a problem. Let's build something to compete with these guys. Let's work with them because they're important channels. But instead of like, you know, logging into 10 different uh, UIs, you're creating one UI powered by your AI infrastructure to build this performance tool, right? So it means that like, if you want clicks, we get clicks. If you want conversions, you want conversions. So I'm interested to see how this conversion model works in respect to that. Yeah, and again, this is always the discussion about attribution model, right? It always ends up that Google is taking the last click. But what we are looking into is actually how is a publisher and display actually, you know, serving and actually doing an assist to Google and who's actually counting the assist. That's also Google, right? So in the favor of Google, it always ends up at Google. So one of the things that we also hear is addressing to the publisher that they are in the equation actually helping to serve a lower cost per click on Google because they are serving a display banner. You might not click on it, but when you're searching on Google, you actually have to, you know, the awareness that was built on the publisher, but they don't get the credit. So with having that value chain and data as a publisher and classified, you're in a need to serve the SMEs. And as you know, Google and Facebook would not, so Google would not sell Facebook ads and Facebook would not sell Google ads. So publishers and the classified, then actually have a quite good position here to sell their own inventory and Google and Facebook. Exactly. So, Is so it anyway, yeah, it's, um, yeah. There's an upsell there and, and taking, as you said, taking back control. This is what I love about this. It's a bit like, you can't fight Google and Facebook over their scale and size. You've got to figure out a way to work within them and take money 
not take money for them, but, you know, work with them as a channel partner. And the more that, you know, Snap and Pinterest and all these other platforms come up and grow, that just gives you more opportunity, you, you know, like Nexus kind of plug into that as well and make it easy for publishers to kind of own that relationship with the buyers. Agree. And the asset the publishers and classify have today is still the end client. They still have tons of end clients. So the asset of that combined with the first party data, they are in a position to do it now, but is it the venue of, you know, the opportunity is, is, you know, less than, you know, two years. Otherwise, uh, the relation will go to the big ones. Okay. So, so this is the conversion funnel. What about your optimization piece? Because that's obviously important. We have to we have to work towards uh, the metrics. So, how does that optimization piece work in in the in the in the platform? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the optimization piece basically works by uh, utilizing uh, this model that sits inside uh, the uh, Neo AI. Uh, so, so maybe I should just uh, spend a bit more time on this uh, on this model. So, what this basically allows us um, is to simulate. Uh, what happens if you change um, a budget on Google or on Facebook? What happens if you block a domain? What happens if you bid a bit higher on one banner? So what this model basically tells us, including these assist aspects that uh, Martin mentioned, is it tells you what is the expected number of clicks you get when you add, uh, if you increase the budget on Facebook by 10% or lower it by 10%. What happens in terms of clicks, impressions, uh, leads, conversions? And then... Um, what we basically do uh, is that we can now uh, take an optimizer and then we can tweak these things without trying it out in the real world, not wasting money on making mistakes. We use the model to make the mistakes on the computer, basically run simulations, and then we pick the best performing simulation. And that is what we put into the third party systems for the next day. Yeah. And then we monitor that performance uh, continuously increase and all those kind of things. So that is how our optimization works together with the, with the model. Um, and as a whole, that constitutes an, an AI. Uh, this, this combination of having a, an ability to predict tomorrow uh, with a model and then uh, tweak the settings um, on the computer, not executing them in the real world, not making mistakes and, and wasting money, but only uh, executing the best performing uh, settings. One of the things I want to ask you is about display. I mean, obviously, display has, got, uh, has often got a bad rap right, particularly from publisher sites. But your your attribution model is kind of building that in as a as a as a as a sort of a path to conversion. Is exactly. that correct? So you that can does. show the value to a buyer going, look, it's 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 much more than last click. I, I think this is the problem sometimes we conceptualize the attribution model to an ordinary advertiser. They're going, what the feck is this? Like this is just yeah. as sense. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can build it in to, you know, here's your ad on the newspaper site. Here's, you know, that leads to a, a, a user having awareness about the product and then buying the product either on Facebook or Google or Amazon. That's that. That's exactly right. Those are the assist effects that Martin mentioned. And what's interesting here is that uh, because we are a system that 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 is on top, it's a layer, an omni-channel layer across all the channels. Then we can actually look for these assist effects across systems. So that's quite interesting because Google, they don't share data with Facebook and all the way around. So even though we know that display will affect how much you search for things, like search is a, it's a, it's a catch of, of, of the last, last research you do when you make a purchase. Uh, so we basically built that in, meaning that we will see the effect. We will have the attribution of display how it works towards increasing your, your or changing your search behavior. And the same thing with, with social media. Uh, and we can orchestrate that across systems. Facebook and Google and the big techs, they can do that within their own systems. But we know there are these cross effects across systems. And they are not able to do that because they don't have the data of, of this campaign with the same, uh, the same targeting, the same creative message. They cannot orchestrate that, but we are able to do that because we uh, we sort of uh, control all the campaigns that run across these different systems. Yeah. So we are, we are able to turn up a display campaign to basically increase the CTR in your search campaign or uh, put more money into a, a retargeting campaign on social because we can see that works. So and, uh, you, could, you could almost try and get uh, users to ups, or you can have, publishers can upsell themselves and but if you buy this display ad, it will improve performance like that. You have that campaign performance to say, you know what, 
your you know display is is uh, not a wasted spend. It has value in in the in the path to conversion. It does, it for sure does, uh, because it just builds awareness and it increases your likelihood of, uh, of of acting further down the funnel. Definitely. And and I think on the equation now we're also talking about local advertising. So we know for a fact that you know local advertising in your local online newspaper have a an amazing trade-off for you know seeing the ad on social, seeing the ad on on Google afterwards. So I think the trade-off for here is also this. That we are, you know, local, and for sure it will have a, a side effect. But usually these guys they're just tracking on, you know, Google Analytics, and then you will get a cost per click essentially. I mean, you're. I mean, this is really interesting because you're kind of building that elusive attribution model for local display advertising, right? That's kind of got lost in the noise, right? It's very hard for a local newspaper to say, "Look, we have value. We're not sure what it is." So this is kind of always allowing those publishers to go. Do you know what? If you spend a uh, hundred uh, euro on an MPU on our website, we can show the value of that down the chain, and we can show you this all works together. And I guess you know, Facebook and Google have monopolized that in many ways and made it easier for uh, advertisers to see the value of Facebook. But reality is, how much you know is that really all of, all down to Facebook, or are there other things uh, along the journey that actually have that conversion in the first place? Yeah, so so the pitch for this, you know, the local reps, uh, sales rep for a publisher is going out saying, okay, you might be spending one thousand Google, you might be spending two thousand a month on Facebook, keep doing that. But also, you know, add this local digital presence on top, and then we will ensure that we are spending the money correctly because then you will see a decrease on your cost per click, both on Facebook and Google. So essentially, the pitch is keep doing what you do today at the local display campaign within one platform and then we will ensure to optimize on the behalf of the client. Yeah, and, and, and Per, are you, like, I, I'm sorry to harp on this, but it's really important. That, are you seeing improved conversion since using the platform? I know, like, uh, you're going to say obviously yes, but, like, obviously, objectively, are you seeing when uh, an advertiser has that level of control over these omni-channel uh, spending uh, areas, are they able to optimize in a way that they get better performance across the whole the whole sort of uh, media spectrum? Yeah, we have, we've seen that very clearly. So we have like seen it directly in the data when someone have like a, maybe an always on search campaign because you just want that collecting uh, people's uh, search behavior. Then you turn up uh, a display campaign, bringing out some message. Then you then very often we see a very strong uh, increase in the CTR and search. So we are seeing these effects like very clearly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, we've got we've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, I want to I want to just go to one of the other slides that was quite interesting. Um, was the uh, the first party um, uh, segment building, which is quite interesting. Can you can you talk a little bit about that activist structure first party because. This is interesting because obviously in a world without third-party cookies, this becomes, you know, so, so important uh, going forward. So could you give sort of uh, viewers sort of an idea of how you use that for optimizing campaigns uh, across these various platforms? Yeah, so uh, in the equation, as, as you know, publishers have been investing, some publishers have been investing uh, huge of, you know, and money into DMPs, collecting login data, uh, also on the classified piece to you know activate search behavior on, on classifieds. So with, with with we all know what's going on with you know third party cookie being disabled, and so we actually see this uh, as a key to actually activate your your first party data within the environment today at scale. So so the different with us compared to others that we can actually scale your first party data towards SMEs, because if you look at an SME today, he doesn't know what kind of first party data a publisher have or classified have. So it's actually up to us, based on the first party data, to do recommendation and choose the first party data, which will match the objectives of the clients. And there are various metrics we could put into, because when we're talking about first party data, it's essentially not only about user behavior, it could essentially also be metadata from classified 
price of the car, how long has this car been for sale? If you want to sell this car, you might do advertising on certain level, vice versa. And Pierre can get a bit back to that. Yeah. But that, that, that are where we see a lot of, you know, opportunity for those guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so, so basically, <clears throat> if you are in, in possession of this kind of structured uh, first party data, then you can, you can basically leverage that across all your clients, all your end clients. So if you have a good certification, you can say, okay, there are all the local supermarkets. They can actually help each other from a partner perspective performing well, but that's only possible if you as a classified, um, or oh, sorry, publisher have made this classification and know, so, know something about your, your clients. So this is very valuable information. And on the classified side, uh, as Martin mentioned, then maybe you have a lot of understanding of the kind of products that your, that your end clients are selling. And that enables us uh, through Neo to basically uh, share data and insights across thousands of clients, meaning that your your campaigns will perform better, faster. And this is this is quite unique because again, this is not something that the big tech companies, even though they have thousands of engineers working yeah. on this, they don't they don't support this. They don't support uh, hooking into all this nice data uh, that you have lying around. Um, that's because, that's because Pair, they're not interested in. They're only interested in selling more shit on their platform. So they're not interested in the greater good, like like uh, like you guys are. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So that's 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 one thing. Uh, one unique uh, one unique thing we do. Um, and this, if you think a little about a bit about it, this is also how a human planner works. So they. They, they get information, they maybe specialize in a certain vertical, they know how to run these campaigns. And this is basically what our AI is also doing, except that it's doing it super systematically and across, you know, a much, much larger scale than any, you know, uh, media agency could, uh, could ever do. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Um, in terms of sort of just as we finish up, just t talk talk about maybe a use case from one of your one of your clients and how they've used this. I know you work with... Um, it's a very large uh, uh, mo um, motor uh, auto sort of classified was quite interesting. Um, just wondering how, uh, you know, how you work with those guys and how, how they're using the platform to kind of keep. Yeah, their, yeah, their so, yeah on, on the classified level, uh, a bit high level, why uh, uh, are classified actually investing in this area is also because uh, Facebook marketplace is popping up, you know, Facebook being a bit more into automotive, real estate, job, saying, yeah, we have the eyeballs now. We will we will take this classified market and then we will have all the automotive to, to put in their listing as a, on a Facebook marketplace. However, what Facebook doesn't have right now is the search behavior on the classified and they won't have it at all. So instead of going in the direction, we don't believe that car dealers will go on Facebook marketplace why don't you take another approach saying we know that there will be a marketplace, but we will be the one controlling, meaning you will still serve your listing on a classified and then we will actually help you to be active on Facebook, social media, display media with the, you know, the, the, the traditional, uh, the right banner at the right moment to the right user based on their data. Yeah. So that's, I think that's a trend we, that we are seeing across classifieds because they have tremendously data and they have tremendous relation to the end client. However, we all know when, when Facebook is uh, in going into these, you saw with the yellow pages, Google took it away within a year. Yeah. So if you keep trying to compete, then they will succeed with the Facebook marketplace. Yeah. Yeah, the vampire squids of Silicon Valley. Um, yeah, so so um, finishing up, um, are, are you planning more platform integrations? Is that the plan for for what you what you do next, or what what's sort of on the roadmap now for for next uh, going forward? Yeah, so accordingly, still you know three years old company uh, building roadmap towards our clients for sure. There are some some interesting integration that could uh, potentially be, as you mentioned, self on the social. Pinterest is popping up, uh, Snapchat as well. But for us, it's important that you can scale towards SME. Amazon also have a you know API to the DSP, so. On, on top of our head, we would like to become this meter layer. So we, we actually don't care if we're going to serve this DSP or that DSP, or we're going to serve Facebook social. We will serve it based on the data. So I think in the going forward here, I think our investment is, is more towards peer. So we don't 
only discuss this as a platform. We want to be a service providing recommendation when you log into the platform. Yeah. Use this amount of advertising money. Why should you use it? And then report on the real value that you're creating. So instead of always talking about platform, I see ourselves going into be a more like a service provider. Also, when you're doing, you know, buying online and on Amazon, you get recommendation. This is a topic for first party data. Use this banner. We recommend you to do X, Y, Z. So we, our investment is going towards optimization and recommendation, and for sure, uh, still want to be relevant to to various integration. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, on that note, gentlemen, thank you very much for that run through the platform. That is uh, a fascinating solution. I love this type of thing that uh, you're addressing, like a, a, an area of ad tech that rarely gets looked at, which is a huge SMB market, which is basically. 90% of Facebook and Google's revenue, well, which ad tech has ignored. And uh, it's great to see a company building something for the local publisher and platforms to kind of fight back against this sort of a stealing of, uh, of, of, of revenue and spend. Uh, and gentlemen, thank you very much. We'll have you back again, no doubt, in a couple of months when you've built out more stuff. So, uh, and hopefully, uh, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we'll have ATS London this year and we can have you there at ATS London. Uh, COVID vaccinations uh you know on the proviso that's been rolled out properly but who knows thank you, uh, thank you. No thank worries. You. and that was trade talk tv and we'll see you next time